<laughs> Hello, YouTube. Bruce Jokers here on uh, Tuesday, November 21st, 2017 at 1517 in the afternoon Eastern Time. And God bless us, everyone. We're having a little bit of a winter lager here with Sam Adams. Of which Paul had four while he was here just moments ago. Uh, I thought maybe he'd have to do some more laundry, but he didn't. He just came over and shot the shit for a while and had four beers. Uh, many tales of the hotel, which I can't really go into because, you know, so many of them are ad hominem uh, things. I can't recount those. Uh... But, uh, I assume he's working on Thanksgiving Day, which is coming up. This is, you know, this being Tuesday and uh, Thanksgiving Day being Thursday. Uh, we, we didn't get into what he's doing and the, or what I'm doing. Uh, and I can tell you what I'm going to be doing here, but I'll tell you either during the day or after the day. It's something very pleasant uh, for a change, as opposed to sitting here, I'm just thanking God for my existence and, and being grateful for what I have. I'm actually going to be with people, maybe, probably, 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 let's, you know, let's not count those, those hens in the hen house too fast, Joe. And yes, it'll all still be here in the Central High area and not down in other parts of the world. Which, interestingly, uh, for the very first time, Paul expressed an interest in seeing on the Google Earth. Uh, so I showed him where my friend in Australia lives. And, uh, yeah, and... Beautiful fucking place. Nice place. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he's he's very, you know, he's yeah. At some point, this is going to become so boring for you. You all start clicking off. Click, 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 click. But on the other hand, uh, that's what goes through my mind, so that's what I think about, and uh, occasionally that's, I try to not talk about it, but sometimes it slips out. Okay, well, enough of that. Now, uh, today, other than the fact Paul came over, which I, I kind of thought he might, but I wasn't sure he would. You know, it was right at that, that sort of like one one twenty in the afternoon thing where he might not show up. And I, I had gone in and taken a dump. I like to call that my secondary dump. Maybe that could be Norman Rockwell's other painting. Joe realizes he has to have a secondary dump. You know, it's like on a Saturday evening post cover going like, you know, for like, It'd be like their bowel cancer issue or adult diaper issues. <laughs> I don't know what they do now. I haven't even seen. Well, I'm, I think I think the magazine went out of business, but I think it's one of the, it's one of these things like like life used to you know issue like one offs every now and again. I don't know Saturday Evening Post. They had some good writing in that. Uh, my uncle and aunt, my aunt Sally and Uncle Frank subscribed to it. Um, I always would, would sit in uh, their living room, which uh, looked like a an Orlan carpeted and uh, 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 wonderland, um, very much like what imagine a hotel room in Disneyland looks like. Well, no, it does look like because I've been in a hotel room in Disney World or you know Orlando. You know, you know, so after I decided not to actually take my own life by having, you know, you know, to stay there, and after having, you know, sort of fought off the big six foot seven 
employee that barged into my room by pulling out my 44 Magnum that I had brought down with me. Oh, there's too many, too many subordinate clauses. Too many subordinate clauses. Too many subordinate clauses. <laughs> In any case, everything worked out fine. Nobody got hurt. He, he realized he was overstepping his bounds, even though he was told to do that in his job. <laughs> yeah. But that's the last time he's going to come barging in without making sure the guy inside acknowledges his knock one way or another. Coming in to give you a package of Peanuts is not worth your fucking life, guy. Don't come in on me unawares while I've got a fucking revolver in my hand. Just don't do that. Let me know you're there. Oh my, I don't think my eyes are tracking. Ah. <sighs> I saw that for quite some time. Okay. Yeah, let's try that again. Let me look straight ahead and let's see if it comes to tracks. No, I'm not. I'm cross-eyed. I'm actually fucking cross-eyed. Well, that happens, you know. I mean, you know, I'm 65. I'm going to be 66 here in about four weeks, five weeks, eight weeks. Let's see. One. Five weeks. Six weeks, six and a half weeks, five and a half weeks, six weeks. It's okay. I've outlived my dad. God bless him. So I, I, uh, I watched my nephews, my honorary nephew, but I, I'm hell. As far as I'm seeing, he's my nephew. Now, period. Uh. He put up a, you know, he's, he's trying to get in the live stream format because the guy he really likes and, and uh, has learned from and is a great guy, Dean Caswell. I don't know because maybe he just does, likes the format. I don't, you know, I myself would never try the format. I've thought about it, but you know, it just wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't work for my style of stuff. But Dean Caswell on, on In the Trenches with Cas. That's his channel. In the Trenches with Kaz handles the live stream format very well. There are very few people that handle the live stream format very well. Another person that handles the live stream format very well is That's Brad. And now, uh, Ed B uh, is also uh, sort of starting to learn how to manage the live stream format very well. Uh, except uh, I would have two or three actual constructive criticisms. One, don't keep, you know, you know, decide on a sound system and a video system and stick with it. Don't keep experimenting now. Don't keep experimenting now. Two, be sure that your sound level is going to be adequately high such that everybody can hear you. The, the setup last night was, or on Sunday, I guess, or whenever was the last one you did, every time you moved your head over dead straight ahead, your sound trailed off into almost inaudibility. Now, you're not, you're not some guy that speaks softly like some of these guys. You know, there's a guy in England that watched it goes, it's not you, Tony. It's another guy. He's in Cambridge. And he always wants to talk really softly. I'm thinking, hell, you live alone in the damn house. Why do you want to talk softly? You know, come on, just speak up. Well, you know, I've taught school, I've taught classes, in a, I've, I've taught chemistry labs in a very loud, hurly-burly lab with 60 people, and so I know how to, I know my school teacher voice, you know, so, but, you know, yes, admittedly, and so my folks taught school, and they talked that, we all talk loud, but you know, at least make your, if you're, if you're going to try to, 
if you are going to try to hold another individual's focus and thoughts on what you are saying, then you have to make it audibly heard and understood. That's true. Not this, oh, I, I really, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, it's like, you know, just, you know the, guys, if you're a guy, don't sound like a chick. And, and, and women, if, well, you're not a guy, you're a woman, so, you know, don't, don't, don't make what you have to say inaudible, because you've got stuff to contribute to, of course, and that's not to patronize you with faint praise. Although I know that sounds like that. Yes, I'm shaming. Yeah, it's like, trigger, 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 and all that bullshit. Safe space, safe space, space, space. Give me a break. Come on. Get some intellectual honesty going here, folks. Oh, we've wandered a bit far afield. And planned to do so. Anyway, so uh, Paul came over and he had four of my winter loggers. So I'm now down four. That's all right. At least he didn't sit there and drink seven or eight like he does or did did the one time, which if you go back to my material, you'll find out. Um, he told me, you know, several stories about his work, which is fine, which I cannot recount here because part of his employment contract was an agreement to, to not overtly discuss his situation on the internet, and he's not done so, and I will honor that. Uh, I, I can go so far as to say that uh, he's in a very awkward situation. You've got uh, a family of, how should we say, well, you know my attitude toward immigration. I have no problem with immigration. I think, you know, come on, you know, if you want to come up here and, and live and work and be free and contribute, more power to you. I mean, that's my attitude. You know, care for the widow, orphan, and stranger. You know, so, you know, come on in. You know, and, and, and as long as you're not going to freeload, and, and, and I'll tell you, I've, I've never met an immigrant that's come in here that's freeloading. They're always very striving, and, and uh, uh, particularly from south of our, you know, southern borders, but those with ears here. Well, anyway, this, this so uh, on the other hand, you know, so you've got, you got a man and his wife. And they, they work at the hotel, and they're doing, you know, they, they are like work ethic city. On the other hand, they're 18, 19, 20 year old. I think he's about 20, 21 years old. It's hard to say. Uh, the age range seems to change with the various tellings, and that's not necessarily that guy's fault. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm thinking, you know, just anyway. So there, there've been there, there've been some there've been some issues at work over the years. Uh, well, months, well, a couple of years now, actually. And um, you know, we're we're talking about the management going the extra mile. We're talking about. Paul going the extra mile, although he doesn't really have any call and say in the matter. But on the other hand, he's kind of like the, uh, well, well he, he, he wasn't first in on this, but they consider him kind of like a senior employee in that division. Uh, they don't want to lose the mother and dad, but they'd like to get rid of this kid. And he's not a kid, he's like, you know, I don't know, 19, 20, 20. He's got a wife, wife, though. He's married. That doesn't make any difference, though. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I got married when I was 22. Is that right? Let's see, 1975, 23. Thomas was born when I was 22. I'm sorry I referred to him as the accident the other day. I deeply apologize. But that was what happened. 
That's okay. And that's the, see, that's how God works. So, okay. All right. Well, so, all right. Well, I think we've, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's sort of summarize here. One, I've not heard anything more from uh, the Southern Hemisphere uh, since uh, early, that would be early Monday morning his time, mid-afternoon my time last week. Uh, not even so much as a text. Uh, as much as I dislike tax, uh, I'm going to go over to uh, Liz and Henry's on Thanksgiving Day uh, at a time yet to be determined, and thanks be to God for that. This woman at church that has been sick unto death uh, here for the last few weeks is now recovered, uh, and is now getting ready to come home for her Thanksgiving Day uh, on Thursday. So, thanks be God for that. Um, now, Tony Pincham has finished re-uploading all of his videos that he's going to re-upload because he deleted all his videos. He was pissed off, you know, he got a death threat, he deleted all his videos, and he got pissed off, and he deleted all his videos. He's now re-uploaded all the ones he wants to leave up there. I particularly urge you to watch the last one where he and I review gay porn in a mystery 3000 theater model. <laughs> I think it's funny as hell. But then I'm an arrogant, narcissistic, so, SOB. So, <laughs> so, we'll see. Meanwhile, I'm going to you know, have a snort. Okay. Let me splice these two boys together. I don't. I can't figure out whether to put Paul first or Paul afterwards. I think I'll put me first and Paul afterwards. Um, that seems ungracious, but, you know, in reality, I know that if I put Paul first, you guys are going to watch this crap. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe, well, some people do. He's got quite the following sometimes. Okay, I will shut up, and I wish you all a very massively happy Thanksgiving, for those of you in the United States, and for those of you... Australia, UK, and other places, and I know you're there. I know you're there. Here's an idea. Why don't you subscribe, like, and comment so I know that you're there. And I particularly direct the comment thing. You know, set up a pseudo, another pseudo thing so I can sense it. That's, you know, come on, you know. All right. Now, eventually, eventually I'll shut up, but it's clearly not the time I'm going to do that right now. So, all right. Bye-bye, YouTube. Pack with sardines in a can. And it's going to lay all the way back to the and And it's got, you know, you can see the Gemini thing. And it's empty. <laughs> There's nobody out there. So it's like nobody knows we can do that Worthington cut to get Gemini in the traffic to get to the freeway, which is what the plan was. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Nobody knows that. I can't wait. <laughs> that's what they're called. That's a reference to Gemini. That's what they, that's that, that's what that's what the signs are saying. Fucking employees kept saying that when they were staying covered down with Uncle. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there is no Akiwa. Well, there is. Let's go up there and look, read the sign. It said blue and white rather than, rather than the O-dot approved green and well, white. I thought that was what they were calling from Jim Rye back to the I don't know. It's, it's, getting, it's getting like... Jim Engl is referring to Jim Rye. It's like England when they change the fucking street names every, uh, you know, every 200 yards or some bullshit. Well, I think yeah. <laughs> word of mouth that's what they're calling it. It's not actually what the sign is. Well, actually, there are, there are signs that say Ikea Way. By the way, that's that's a 35 mile speed limit up there, rather than 45. So, uh, I yeah, always I always not, for, I always forget that when I go down to the freeway that way. The Ikea uh, Way, everybody, it's referencing to is the step that goes from Gemini to the Ikea store. Well, it might be. I mean, I you know I I I. I tend not to overthink these things because it doesn't really bother me one way or the other. What am I going to order? I'm call anything they want. I know how to get a car. I know where this road runs. I'm going to go to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jasmine's looking in my ears. Oh, your doc? Yeah. Jasmine? She, you've got it. You got a big chunk of wax. Well, yeah, get you know, get your get your big pen top and dig it out. She, well, see, I've been trying. I didn't even try to. Well, you, you gotta you gotta keep on it. You can't. Once you your yeah. thing, you know where. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You gotta keep on that shit. So I was like, looking at it. you know, you say anyway exactly like my mother used to say that. <laughs> I don't think that's probably not a good thing. All right, they pulled a chunk of wax out of a fucking head the size I, of my little finger. I I understand that. Up. I understand that. I. When I was a kid, I used to have this stuff come, you know, sort of spontaneously fall out that looked like uh, uh, small musket balls out of my ear, yeah. Hard, brown, and, you know, firm with spikes on Well, not spikes, but so much as ridges. The once a year I go deaf in this year, you know, I keep kept well, trying and stuff and flushing it. I never got a thing. You've, yeah. And there uh -huh. they got it. Well, yes, because you didn't, you know, and, and flushing, see, flushing is always the, you know, that's because they want you to go to the doctor to do it rather than just, you know, taking matters in hand every two or three days on your own account and I dealing with that, it. I got that ear stuff. Uh, I know. Stuff, got that. I know. I've seen those little kits. I, I have seen those little kits, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, mother. Okay, mom. Dude, I got that dude out. I got two. Are you sure you can hear that? Yeah. Are you fired? She passed that on. She said, "Yeah, I know. It means me too." Is there anything else in there? There's nothing in the right. That's why I always maintain. Shit from having a window open. That's why I always maintain uh, longer fifth finger f fingernails so I can use them to dig out my ears. And that's why I always keep this particular big pen top on the table to dig out my ears well, with. After she left the room, <laughs> I took my little finger. I get it, you know. Oh, good. I'm not getting. I know. I'm not getting anything. I know. I've no, seen I'm it. I'm not getting anything. So I do it over here. Listen. I got a ton of shit. Listen. Out of this and one over here. I've stuck oh, my face. She's got the wrong side <laughs> of the head. I've stuck my face in instruments into lots of different kinds of holes, and I've seen all sorts of amazing things. <laughs> you, you. Big time earwax being among the least 
off them. Are you serious? <laughs> These are real long, you know, like. Tweezers. Well, yeah, Back in there. yeah. I used to use when I when I was when I you know before I became kind of you know uh, 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 you know sort of coordinated problematic. She brought coordinated. <laughs> She's so coordinated. <laughs> I mean, they came in with like a like a Swiss Army knife spray bottle thing with a hose. And Guess I'm not gonna get that. Yes, yeah, like a power washer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that too hot? I said it's ice cold. She said you're cute. She stood over there and she's running on water for like five minutes more. I wonder if it ever happened to Tom Nims's power washer business. She said, well, what do you think? She said, well, how's that? I said, we that feels better. That. She said that's warm. <laughs> she just kept going, kept going. Remember Tom? That. Remember Tom's power washing business? Yeah, I've never heard. I, on new houses, well, no, he actually he actually started it. I mean, actually, you know, I I, I wonder what happened to it. I don't know. That was that Dutch. I, thought, well, that I don't know. A great job for me. I don't know if that was. Yeah, I thought so too. And I I, I didn't know that Dutch idiot. Of course, it was a Dutch idiot was involved. Which, oh, yeah. You know, he's just you know, I, that that guy was massive bad news. So. Sort of like my Bill Henson, yeah. That's sort of probably what I remember. Well, I don't know. It's hard to tell, you know. Yeah. Look at that nitwit. Oh, man. Oh, what a... That guy was a trip. Yeah, he was a bad... He was a piece of bad news. Even I recognize that, and I, I have, I'm slow on the uptake. I had fucking wife and kids during me. Well, the wife was okay. The kids were okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was a. He was a. He was just a. He was another. He was a waste product. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, he seemed to you know be making money, so I guess he wasn't like a bad provider. So maybe not yeah. that much of a waste product. Oh, it's like Bill and Tracy. Well, that's right. Tracy yeah. was neat, great, and everything. Yeah, Tracy was fantastic. And Bill, you know. Well, Bill seemed to be okay until it turned out that he wasn't. But yeah. Well, these things happen. Live and learn. <laughs> I haven't told you all guys the the complete story on some of these things, and I don't know if I'm ever going to. But in any case, just bear in mind that these are things from the past that are that happened in the mid '80s. So it's been a while back. The statute of limitations is expired. <laughs> the other. No, no, no murder, no manslaughter, no murder, no manslaughter, we're all yeah, safe.